Joining me now live is Nationals MP Keith Pitt. Keith, thanks for joining us. Look, this is really the time that the Coalition has ignited this energy policy war. It's the first time we've really heard it. And it is about time we have some debate on the matter. How do you think that a nuclear modular reactor, say at the site of the old Liddell coal station, would be received by the electorate? Well, first things first, Danica, facts still matter. Facts still matter in this debate. And uh, Mr Albanese, I just heard the grab, he's completely wrong. Uh, in fact, Barnaby Joyce has said he'd be happy to have one in his electorate. Cole Boyce said he'd take three up in Flynn because he wants to keep industry in Gladstone. Uh, and when you look at the coal-fired power station sites we have now, and there are a number which were closed, but they're still there. The easements are there for transmission. And in many cases, the actual transmission lines are there. Most of them have significant sources of water uh, for their ash plants, uh, for their water cooling, uh, and of course, you know, condensate that's made out of the boilers. So they make sense. And you have all of that technical skill that already exists for the coal-fired power station. They transfer exactly into a nuclear powered station because quite simply all it is is a different source of energy to create steam. Uh, the rest is all the same. And the reality is, Keith, that we've had multiple warnings over the years, even from the energy market operator, that we don't have that infrastructure in place to reach net zero goals. What happens in between when we see the coal stations shutting and us moving to renewables? Where will the energy come from? Well, according to Chris Bowen, it's magic. <laughs> It'll just fall out of the sky and everyone will be happy and everything will still work. Uh, and, you know, there'll be wonderful powder puffs in the sky and unicorns running down the street. Uh, it's ridiculous. You will need to keep your coal-fired power stations online. Uh, they will need to be invested in. You will need to have gas. You've got the ridiculous situation in Victoria where they've prohibited gas exploration for a decade and now they've run out and they're wondering why they've got challenges. There's still 25 years to go. Uh, and if you look at the builds around the world, some of the most recent, South Korea, for example, they've built the a APR 1400 pressurised water reactors, four of them. Three of them are online. Uh, the fourth one is pretty close. And that started in 2005. That's 5,000 megawatts for $22 billion. And you don't need to cover the country in transmission lines. You don't need millions of hectares of solar panels and wind turbines that mm. only last for two decades. Mm. It just makes sense. Well, look, I think finally we're going to have a debate in this country about it, and it's much needed debate because something needs to be done urgently. But look, I want to ask you about this suspected boatload of asylum seekers arriving in WA today, and just as the High Court decides whether or not to release even more immigration detainees into the community. Look, Keith, what a shambolic week when it comes to border protection. Is this a sign that Labor has gone weak on boat arrivals? Well, Minister Giles is clearly all at sea. Uh, Mr Albanese today said he didn't know anything about it. Uh, he's the Prime Minister. He's surrounded by staff who get briefed constantly about breaking news and what's happening. Uh, we've seen Minister Giles release people from detention, many of whom are now lost. They don't know where they are. A number have re-offended. And now he's found some new asylum seekers, uh, allegedly, that have arrived in town. Uh, they have lost control of our borders. We warned the Australian people this would happen. And it's another broken promise from the Albanese government. Yeah, look, it's honestly, it's absolutely shambolic. And we need to know more information about these people. We don't know who they are. We don't know, well, they're apparently from Pakistan, but we don't know the key details. Keith Pitt, good to speak with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be with you.